Hey guys, thanks for watching. Please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and all our social media platforms at Fino Boxing. You can follow my personal social media at Adriana underscore sports. Enjoy. Hey guys, Rigo with Fino Boxing here with Jazelle Santel. Beautiful gym, congratulations. Thank you. Man, thank it's you. pretty hot. Sweat boxing, we're all sweaty. You know, just talk about being a few weeks away. I just had this right on June 12th. We had the Wilson's on the 19th. And the Sporting Sosa and a few other guys on that day as well. The Trinity Park. Just let's focus on the first one. Sammy Sally has 8 and 0. 18 years old. I mean, you know, all eyes are on Insana and says, you know, all of Puerto Rico and the U.S. You know, how would you assess his progress, you know, since he's a Trump pro? Well, you know, I mean, with the energy, I've had him since he was really young. Um, he, he grows fight by fight. You know, he improves a little bit more every fight, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for just that that improvement. You know, there's no rush with him. He's young, so we can you know we can take our time a little bit with him and just work on certain things. You know, we yeah, there's no rush. So you know, top rank is moving him well. Uh, you know, getting you know good fights. Every fight is a test. You know, we're testing him little by little. Um, but he's growing. He's you know he has. He hasn't reached his man strength yet, so um, yeah, we, we kind of regulate his workouts according to you know what's happening with his growth, you know, because he gets these little growth spurts all of a sudden, where it's either in weight or in height. So we have to you know we monitor that and see you know, see what we can do. Now he's still at one forty seven. Obviously, you mentioned yeah. big frame, big you know, tall guy. Eventually, moving up to one fifty, one sixty, maybe one sixty eight, just for his frame alone, but. How much longer do you think he'll stay at this weight class? Well, so again, we get close to him more time. Obviously, he's only a team. We monitor him camp by camp. You know, this camp, you know, we, you know, we kind of decided as a team, you know, you know, let's look at you know possibly next fight or the fight after that. You know, start moving him up a little bit. Uh, again, just because you know he's growing and there's no need. He makes the weight pretty easy. You know, he's young, so his metabolism's fast. You know, so if, if we have to make 147, you know, it's fine. You know, he does it pretty easy. But, you know, we want to allow his body to grow the way, you know, it should naturally grow. Um, we don't want to hold him back, you know, too much just because, you know, he is going to grow into that, you know, that, that body. And we want to make sure that we can develop the strength for that body as well. So, you know, after this fight, we'll, we'll take a little bit of time off and, you know, see where we're going to go with him in the next fight. Uh, and just just work his body, you know, work his body to function the way it's supposed to. Now he's taking on an experience. He's a guy in Lebanon, in Lebanon, What do you want to see from from Sander June twelfth? Well, yeah, June twelfth. You know, Larry Fries is. You know, we're going from different types of opponents. His last opponent was very tall. You know, it's actually taller than Zalius. Uh, Larry is going to be a little bit shorter than him. So uh, we're working on on different things in terms of range, working his angles. You know, drawing him in a little bit. So just to show a little bit. You know, Xander has come out in most of his fights and has gotten the opportunities to go ahead and take a guy out pretty early. Um, you know, we're always looking to get rounds, but if the opportunity presents itself, you know, we, you know, we end it there. But with Friar, we, we, we want to box. We want to show his, his boxing skills, um, you know, showing his, his, his knowledge of range, you know, just letting him, giving him the opportunity to show his IQ, you know, which... You know, he has. He has a lot of experience. You know, he's sparred with a lot of experienced guys. And everybody gives, feeds him a little bit of information, which has been great. We've been fortunate, you know, being here in Florida and being in an open state. A lot of guys have moved their camps down here. So we've presented him a lot of opportunities to spar with, you know, some elite fighters. Yeah, we've seen that online. Obviously, yeah. Broner, yeah. Before the champion. You know, a lot of times we don't get to see how good a guy like Sandra is because obviously he goes in. You know, fights a couple rounds, stops the guy, but you you know, obviously seeing him day to day in the gym, riding, supporting those legends in a sense. You know, how good is that? But Xander, you know, Xander's special. You know, he's special. He's, you know, again, he's young, so he hasn't... He hasn't reached that that peak yet. He's far from reaching his peak. So there's so much upside with Zan. Um and we're gonna see that as as the years go, you know, passes by. But he's he's growing every fight. Um, you know, his power is getting there. You know, it's getting better. His speed is still there. Um, you know, again, we just want to continually see improvement in every fight. Um, just watch him. You know, watch him go and feel comfortable in every weight class that he that he ends up. In. So, um, honestly, I feel you know eventually he's going to be at that super middleweight division, and you know that's where we'll have to control him a little bit, control that weight, and, and try to stay there. Um, but you know it's you know the sky's the limit with him. You know the fact that he's young and he's at the level he is now. Um, 
it's only it's only an upside for him. Yeah. Yeah. He obviously has uh, set his sights on the Canelo one sixty eight one seventy five. You mentioned that a few days ago in the past. You mentioned about Rachel Ortiz, you know, Mexican American, yeah. you know, just just the more in a sense. You know, what do you think would be the dream matchup for, for Sanjay Dalma? Like, the one that makes him, you know, a heavy. Uh, well, the thing is, you know, yeah, he's he's. You know, he's early in his career. A lot of these guys may not be around at that time. You know? So, um, you know, boxing's all about timing. You know, uh, we hope there's challenges in whatever division he's in. Who they're going to be at that time, we don't know. I mean, Virgil Ortiz may be a guy that you know may still be around because he is young. Um, but whether they'll be in the same weight classes, nobody knows. You know, so um, it's hard to really. You know, it's great that he has his sights on Canelo, but will Canelo be? You know, around when he's in, you know, when he's when he's in the position to you know, to start fighting for a long time. You know, we don't know, we don't know yet, and I don't like to call out names or anything like that, just because it is early in the stage, um, and we just don't know. Yeah, you know we don't know. Yeah, especially you know Puerto Rico against Mexico, they want to see that matchup. But you mentioned 18 years old with all the talent in the world. You, know, you have guys like Frank Davis, uh, yeah. Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, Devin Lopez. All these guys are in the big 20s, 22, 23, 24. He's only 18. Right. So you, you know, can you kind of breaks a little bit and give them a few time to develop and, and get to that 15 and 20 time off. We keep talking about the It's, it, you know, you, think, you mentioned Canelo. I mean, Canelo started, you know, young. We didn't know about Canelo till you know, he was 19, 20, 21 years old. You know, that's when you start to really see, okay, where is this kid going to be, you know, in the next couple of years. Um, and that's what we're waiting on with Xander. You know, again, we're not rushing anything now. Uh, we just want to position ourselves where, you know, he's getting good challenges. You know, and top rank now is, you know, again, providing that for us. Um, and now we see where, you know, what we need to work on, things that we need to work on for the future. You know, um, and I tell you, I love the kid. You know, he's like my son. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, we, you know, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell who will be facing down the road. Uh, we're just looking forward to any challenge. You know. so. One fight that we know for sure is going to happen is June 19. Yeah. The mandatory for Duffy Lopez. He had a great meeting at Breakout where he pretty much talked about Charles Taylor, the man, and Ryan Garcia. Right. And of course, you know, in a sense, we're looking past Is that how you guys sense that you maybe I mean, I, yeah, honestly, past yeah, yeah, honestly, you know, Tilfi, my own Tilfi, you know, since he was young, you know, he's Florida native. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't think he's looking, you know, past anybody. You know, however, I think his mind is a little distracted with everybody else. You know, I don't think any fighter, you know, in their right mind looks past any opponent. You know, because anything can happen in that ring. You know, um, I mean, we could be talking a completely different story had Comey landed the right hand as opposed to Telfimo landing that right hand. So, you know, it, it's you know, it's not smart, you know, to take anyone lightly. You know, but the distractions are there. You know, we all see it. We all see it in social media. Everyone's calling out to Fimo. To Fimo feels the need to respond to everyone. George's focus is strictly on one person. You know, he's not worried about the Ryan Garcia's, the Devin Haney's, the Tanks. You know, it's just on to Fimo. You know, that's his only focus right now. You know, which, you know, that's what we want. We love being the underdog. Um, and having that tunnel vision just for that one. Now, when you picture it on the victory for those people, how do you see that involvement? Do you think he needs to not only dominate, but maybe stop? Uh, just follow up this and not leave it on the judges' hands? Look, it's, it's great not to leave it in the judges' hands, you know. But I think, you know, uh, George has a lot of tools that he can work with, you know. People just see George as that aggressive fighter that's just going to come forward and, you know, try to bang. He can adapt. You know, George is the one that adapts. I mean, we had Selby in the last fight. Who Selby is, you know, basically a counter puncher. And when you look at the numbers, I mean, George out countered Selby, right? So George became the counter puncher. He forced Selby to come forward. Um, so he can adapt, and you know, he, you know, there's a lot of things that they haven't seen of George yet um, that can ex expose a lot that Delfino has. You know, and that's what we were looking for in this fight. Look, he's done the work. He's done all the hard work. Now it's time to perform in that ring. Now, you know? when you talk about that experience, you know, from sparring man impact at 250 rounds plus, you know, how much do you think that could play a role into uh, the Tiffany Lopez fight? 
Well, you know, look, psychologically alone, I mean, you, anytime you're in there with Hall of Famers <laughs> um, and you've done quality rounds with Hall of Famers, you know, it puts you in a position where, you know, look, you know what, when, the, when, when it comes down to it, you know how to push. You know how to push beyond a certain point, okay? And Manny will push you beyond points that you... You know, you never thought you can go beyond, and that's what George. You know, George has gone those rounds with Manny Pacquiao, and Manny Pacquiao forced him to, you know, to push, get into that extra gear, take it that extra round, and that's what you know gives George that confidence. You know, and you know, doing 250 rounds with somebody like Pacquiao is, you know, you can't pay for that type of, you know, that type of work. Uh, you know, is there anything you can take away from that Lomachenko fight, especially the second part of the fight? Or, you know, Lomachenko kind of turn it on, one a few rounds, yeah, yeah. you know, where you can kind of, you know, capitalize on it? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's hard to tell. I mean, you know, a lot of people say, you know, he's chinny and stuff like that, or, you know, he just doesn't have the condition to work. But you know what? That's stuff that you, you can work on. You know, he may come into this fight in the best shape of his life, you know? And we're, you know, we're training for that, you know? Now, the fact that Lomachenko, you know, hardly threw any punches early in the fight, you know, maybe gave him that extra energy to come out, you know, in those last couple of rounds. Came out a little too late, but it does show that, you know, Teofimo can get touched, right? Um, even even with a smaller, you know, smaller guy, you know. Teofimo tends to come into that ring big. He's a, hundred, a big 135-pounder, um, but he's a 135-pounder that, that can get touched. Um, and that, those are things that, you know, that we look at in camp and you know, every time we watch video and stuff like that, it comes up. It comes up in discussion, you know, okay, what do we do in these rounds? What do we do in the later rounds? What do we, how do we start off? You know, and those are the tactics and strategies that, you know, that have been, you know, going through camp. You know, those are things that we don't, you know, mention, but, um, you know, there's a lot of different scenarios that can play out. So we have to have different plans, plan A, B, C, D, E if we have to, right? Um, it's just making sure that the first thing is getting in there, executing, you know, execute the game plan. Uh, things have to change because, you know, adaptations are made, then we have to go ahead and go into plan B, you know. But our thing is just to go in there and execute them.